Hello students, welcome to e-learning with Divine Public School. Now sorry, we are learning economics. We already started the second chapter in economics that is indicators of growth and development and in that first topic we have already completed that is meaning of economic growth, meaning of economic development and then after we have studied about the difference between economic growth and economic development. I hope you are being clear with all the particular points in that particular first topic. Now today in the second topic or we can say second lecture we are going to learn about indicators of development that is the main point towards the chapter. So what are the indicators of development? So we are going to learn about it, how it has been helpful, how it has been calculated, what are the data given under it so that we can compare the different countries to know it is developed or it is underdeveloped or it is developing countries or it is growing up. So how it can attain economic development so all these particular points and lastly what are the limitations factors for this particular indicators we are going to learn in this topic let us study let us know what are the different types of indicators now there are four types of indicators which are there first is growth rate of national income second is growth rate of per capita income third is physical quality of life index that is pqli we can say and lastly you can find human development index now these are the four types of indicators for economic development now let's talk briefly about this particular point so growth rate of national income talks about how national income is been attained now we already studied in 11th standard about how to calculate national income how what are the points included in national income what should be considered what are the different methods now we are not going to talk about that but we are just going to know that what is national income it is a total of the production of goods and services by the citizen of that particular country over a particular one year or a particular period of time that is called as what national income if suppose that production every year remains is constant we can say there is no growth rate but suppose there is a increase every increase in production every year we can say there is a growth rate of national income same way when this national income that is in when depreciation is not deducted it from the national income gross national income is taken up and it has been divided by the per capita uh, divided by the total population of a country we can say we find per capita income so how per capita income is growing if the population is less and the growth rate and the national income is more. So this is how we are going to learn in this all the things we are going to learn in the particular topic. Again further physical quality of life. Now physical quality of life talks about basis on three things. Now the three things are nothing but the life extension or we can say how uh, life of the people how how much long or how much number of years does the people live in particular country so what is the life expectancy of the people how much year of education does the particular uh, one single child in the particular country is attaining so on an average how much percentage of people are literate and for how many years we can say and lastly infant mortality rate infant mortality stands here like uh, a baby which has been born and it is of zero zero to uh, zero to one year or less than one year if it dies so how much what are the percentage or how many babies are there which are dying as this particular norm so infant mortality rate so all these three main topics three main points are considered under physical quality of life if these three things if your extension of education is more you find that it helps us to live better way so if your life expectancy is more it gives you good quality of life if suppose infant mortality rate is less so again we can say so all these three things how it's affecting and how we can calculate physical quality of life so that thing we are going to learn lastly human development index now human development index, index considers so many various points in that but out of that there are three main points that is first is standard of living if you find standard of living is a main point for human development of index but how standard of living is been attained standard that should be known then after again the knowledge that is education matters and thirdly that is life expectancy so how much year does the particular person live for in a particular country so all these three points makes human development and 
there is an indicator which shows about the different countries different parameters so all these things we are going to learn under this particular four indicators now let's start with the first one that is growth rate of national income now here we can say again i'm telling you the definition how this particular thing is coming up if the real national income here it says if there is a continuous increase in real national income of a country for a longer period of time then only we can say that country attains what economic development like suppose india is a developing country so if suppose there is a continuous increase every now and there here in all the sectors agriculture industrial or service sector there is a continuous increase in production and you find that this gives rise to national income and that national income give rise to the growth rate of national growth rate of the economy now that particular economic growth for the several years or for the long period of time we can surely attain a good we can become a good developed nation from developing nation so this is how we can see so how to identify now if you already have the data of the growth rate if the rate of national income is high you can find the rate is high the development is said to be high means if this particular growth rate is near to 8 to 8 to 10 percent every year so that is a high growth rate we can say every year the economy is increasing by 7 to 8 or 7 to 10 percent which is a very well we can say so it can attain a good development we can say if suppose the income increase at low rate for example 2 or 3 percentage or we can say 3 or 2 4 percentage so the development is there but it is very low what happens if suppose it does not rise if does not rise we can say it is not increasing also it is not decreasing also so it is called a state of stagnancy or we can say it is at a constant state it is at a constant state now this cannot be happen because there are certain things which matters so the and again further if the national income decreases there is an underdevelopment or negative development in a economy so from that country which is already growing if their income is less than the previous year production so we can see it is going under develop it is going under development so this is how we can identify now how to calculate real national income we have seen that it is based on two prices current year price and constant price so to calculate real national income we have to consider what we have to consider constant price okay that is which is the base year price we can say and we should not calculate on current year price so this is how it can be attained to real to calculate real national income we have to go with constant or last year base year price so that's how you can find you can calculate national income and that's how the rates which are being given you, know, you can calculate and compare according to it if it is high you can say high development it is low we can say it is low development if it is not increasing we can say it is at a constant state or stagnancy then after if suppose it is goes negative it is decreasing we can say it is going under development the country is going under development so this is how it is happening and lastly all this national income is considered uh, is been calculated on the basis of last year price that is constant price second let's understand with the help of a data table here which is given now this data table is taken from the world bank and economic survey of 2015-16 now what it shows now it shows different countries here and the annual growth rate of national income in percentage now what are the countries taken up norway the country Norway has 2.2 percentage of growth rate as per 2015-16 survey. America has 2.4 percentage of growth rate. Sri Lanka have 4.5 percentage. Then after China has 7.3 percent. India has 7.3 percentage, and Pakistan has 4.7 percentage growth rate in 2015-16. So that report has been taken up from the World Bank and Economic Survey. Now. Let us understand how we can say now this all four countries we can say Norway, America, Sri Lanka, then after Pakistan. Sorry. So four countries you find the growth rate is less. The growth rate is less than the India and China. So we can say they are growing at the lower rate. But whereas you can find that in this if you see Norway and America is a developed country. 
so norwegian america has 2.2 or 2.4 percent it is impressive it is good we can say because it is already developed country we have understood about what is economic growth and economic development so you find that when there is a developed country which is already there so if it is growing at a little by little growth rate also we can say it is very impressive growth rate but where is sri lanka china india and pakistan they are coming under developing countries and you find that india is the fastest growing developing uh, developing country in the world so this help us to know that the growth rate of india and china both is growing at a faster rate so it is more so from this we can identify that developing countries is growing at lower rate but still it is very good for their economy but this four that is the developing countries not developed countries developing countries you find that in that sri lanka and pakistan is growing at a lower rate than india and china and india is the fastest emerging or we can say fastest growing developing country so this is how we can identify their growth rates from the server data now this source are we have to take authentic source then only you are able to uh, identify now let's see what are the limitations in this particular growth rate now here first is difficulty in calculating true national count yes we have heard difficulty in national why because many times there is double counting which we have studied now all this double counting self conception you have studied in your 11th standard what are the points which are should not be included or what are the things which makes it difficult to understand calculate national income so double counting is a point then after self consumption for if you are eating some food for yourself you are making your food and you are eating for yourself that should not be calculated then after depreciation now those machines which are used for the production only th those machines depreciation should be calculated not other machines which are not used for production so all that thing should be uh, uh, should or makes us to difficult to calculate then after you find tax avoidance is there no no many of the people are not paying tax tax evasion is there many of them are doing black money showing hiding their black money and paying less amount of tax all these things then after illiteracy barter transactions like all this particular thing makes it difficult so that particular thing should be known so this makes very difficult to calculate national second important point is population now why population because you find that the growth of population and national income are different so the when you find that when the growth of national income suppose it is 5 percentage for india or we can say 7 percentage like we have seen in the 2015 data it is 7.3 percent but if you say like growth of growth of population is 10 to 12 percent every year in india so what is happening you can say that this gives a negative impact on calculating national income it shows that national income has not grown that much if suppose same way the national income is more that is 7.3 is the data and the growth is we can say 4.3 percent which is 3 percent less than the national income so you can compare and you can say it is showing the development is showing in a positive way because population is not increasing but on the same population on a slow rate of population the income has increased more and more so this gives a positive impact on the development and the development is growing in a constant in a continuous manner and it is called we can attain economic development soon so that particular point is been there so population plays an important role so growth of population should be always lesser than the growth of national income but in many countries we don't find that that's why many countries comes under development under developed countries are there so this is how it happens then after we find that different methods of calculating national income now there are three methods we have seen in 11th standard that is for output method or we can say production income and expenditure method so mainly three type, different types of methods are there now this three different methods are been there and different countries try to adopt different different method it is not the same all the countries does not calculate the national income on the basis of suppose production method or every company does not measure on income they have different methods either they can go with any one of them so this makes the data or the data of different free countries inappropriate to compare 
because suppose USA has calculated their income on the basis of production but India has calculated on the basis of expenditure so we cannot able to compare it and that particular becomes very difficult for us to understand we cannot get the comparison properly so this is what it makes to compare the national income at a problematic way so these are the three limitations of growth rate of national income that is it does not uh, there is difficulty in calculating national income that is double counting you find depreciation is there self consumption is there tax or in tax evasion is there then after population so population rate should be lower than the we can say national growth rate of national income if it is lower we can say the development is positive if it is higher the growth rate of population is higher than the national income it is negative then after methods different countries use different methods if so it is very difficult to calculate or to compare the study between the countries growth or national income i hope you are being clear with this particular points let us move to the next topic that is growth rate of per capita income now in that what is per capita income now per capita income can be known to us by dividing the gross national income by taking gross national income of a country and divided by the population of that particular country now that after you find that you get a per person average income of a particular country so that per person average income of a particular country help us to identify what the standard of living they are having or what is the how much money they have per person on hand to spend for a particular year now now again the main objective of this is to improve the standard of living now economic development means what it should be overall development it is not only economic growth it is economic progress economic welfare also if we studied in the definition so you to attain main thing is that is standard of living and the rise of human development now let us study so per capita income increases if the per capita income increases what happens the betterment the welfare of the people the physical welfare the physical betterment the physical lifestyle of the people is considered to be increased and it shows the real indicator but let us understand with a more deeply like if per capita income increases we can say it is has a faster rate so development is said to be fast if this particular per capita income it's increase at a lower rate we can say that our development is at low same way it is at a it is at a constant rate we can say it is at a stagnation or it is at a uh, state of rest or cons uh, stagnation when but suppose if falls it is negative same way what is happening in the national income same points is dependent here also it depends on the rate if the rate is increasing the development is there if the rate is decreasing the development is slow sorry if the rate is slow the development is slow if the rate is constant it is stagnant but suppose it the rate falls we can say it is decreases the development becomes under development or it shows a negative development of a country now uno says here that it recommends that this per capita income is a superior for Econo superior indicator. It is a superior indicator, or it is the most prominent indicator for economic development. This is how they tell that per capita income shows the real growth of the in nation, of or we can say of the economy. So let us again study the with the help of a table. Now here, World Bank and Economic Survey 2015 data has been given for this. Now countries seem like Norway, America, Sri Lanka, China, India, Pakistan, etc. Now we are here taken uh, per per capita income that is purchasing power parity as per 2014 data. Now this all figures are in US dollar. Now what is purchasing power parity? Purchasing power par parity means how much money does a person is spending for his living so how much money is has so if you have per capita income that is only per, per that is only the income of the people for per person in a country so how he is spending how much money he is able to spend on the expenses in a particular year now then after on the other side there is a growth rate which is being given up as per the 2014 okay now here norway is having 64 
1992 US dollar for one person we can see on an average one person in that 2014 year so 64,000 if you say if in 2014 it is at 60 rupees also if you calculate 60 into 60 it is 36, 000, 36 lakh rupees for per person to spend in Norway so it shows why that's why it is called it is a developed nation same way in America 52,000 if you just calculate at 2014 at rupees 60 per dollar so if you just convert it into that that time price is rate or if you calculate this at the current price rate also and compare that that much money was there you can able to imagine that how much money does the per person it was having in the developed nations like Norway and Sri Lanka same way Sri Lanka China India and Pakistan that is a developing country you find Sri Lanka is having 9779 US dollar which is more than India China is having 12504 47 US dollar which is again more than Sri Lanka as well as India or we can say it is 2.5 more than this whereas compare with Pakistan Pakistan is lower is has a less amount of thing less amount of purchasing power parity than India that is 4866 now you find that but the growth rate here in India is more it the, it is increasing at a growth the growth rate here it is increasing fast per capita income growth rate is more but whereas compared to here here the growth rate is less but if you see developing countries like Norway like 64,000 or we can say assume it like approx 65,000 if we calculate one person also it is growing at 650 650 dollars every year so 65,000 next day it will become 65 650 dollars so what is happening up we can say 65,000 650 dollar is still more far more than the country whereas India it is nearly 5500 dollars so if it is increasing at 6% 5500 means it will give you 33 so 33 dollars only we are increasing if the 6% though the growth rate in percentage is high but if you calculate in the real sense it is less but we are just going to we are not going to actually figure out what is that but we are going to figure out that here the Norway America Sri Lanka China this all the above four countries has more purchasing power parity than India it is China it is Sri Lanka which is a very small island because of less population they have more purchasing power parity so this is how it is happening up now for in conclusion we can say all this above four countries have good more purchasing power and India has a lower that is 5497 as per 2014 data whereas if you compare the same our purchasing parity with Norway it is 12 times 11 or 12 times more than the India and but if you compare with the growth rate India's growth rate is more than the Norway which is increasing at a faster rate so this is how we can calculate it is how we can we can know about the per capita income now let after I hope you have been clear with this table let's understand about the limitation now first these are all only estimates why per capita income is known as only estimate because here because the every year there is a calculation of national income is being there we can find out national income very correctly or most of the points excluding all the points like which are happy, uh, making it difficult if you just eradicate and everything is been done we find national income is there every year but population let's talk about population which is the second important point here that population our census of India calculate for population every 10 years so every 10 years you have to take the same population rate like 2011 the census data says that it is 121.02 crores of people are there so this many crores of people are there and we are taking the same data but actually here today's world if today in 2020 you find it is nearly about 130 crores of people so every year the population is not calculated is calculated every 10 years so it makes we can say this makes us to calculate on the base that is which is taken 10 years or five years ago that is on the 2011 data only 
so that is shows only estimate per capita income and which is not correct second you find that difficulty in national income difficulty in the calculation of national income and per capita what are the difficulties now here i talked that everything has been correct but suppose some of them like double counting tax evasion tax eradication oh sorry avoidance is there then after transfer payment you find that so depreciation is there all this thing is not calculated properly that there are chances so what happened this makes us to be late again suppose all the production of that particular year is not calculated is calculated on the constant price again or current price so again there makes a difference again from if we try to go from constant to current prices again it makes a difference so there are some or the other way you find that there is a difficulties which are coming up or there are risk factors in calculating per capita income and national income so it does not give exact correct figures now so the two situation of our two two situation of a per capita income is not known because of because of this calculating method then after you find that per capita income shows only an average yes that is correct the limitation says it is only an average but in real form you don't find that per person that much money is available like 5497 dollar us dollar was there in 2014 so everyone is not there because there are high class society there are middle class society and there is poor people who are living under poverty line so all these things makes different even the income distribution of among the people is also uh there the distribution of income is inequal or imbalanced so this again make a problem so here it says that on the basis of average no decision can be taken up we cannot take the decision on the average base so we cannot decide which country is is developed which country is underdeveloped here if suppose income distribution is equitable equitable means balance or it is equally distributed we can say the development takes place but suppose inequal distribution the income distribution is inequitable or you can say it is inequal so you find that the development has not taken place so based on this only income there is always disparity in income distribution or there is always inequality distribution of income in a different region different economy so that is so that shows that there is still the development has not achieved whereas this all factors you find in a developing countries whereas in developed nation everywhere there is a equality in income and sorry distribution of income is in equal or it is equitable so this does not show does not show the sufficient data or efficient data it is considered as inefficient this indicator is considered as inefficient lastly this it is difficult for comparison why it is difficult for comparison because per capita of the different countries are explained in their own currencies like india if you india is there it is it, is, it will uh, calculate the national income in terms of rupees us is there it is calculated in the us dollar america is there sorry uh, england is there so it will calculate his country's uh, income in pounds so like that european countries different european countries in different euros like saudi arabia dinar so different different countries are having their different currencies it makes difficult to calculate now what they have to do they have to go with converting into us dollars because the standard acceptable money is what us dollar so you find that when they try to convert in us dollar that is also like we can get it is easy but what is the second most point is that every now and there every day every now and there you find that the exchange rate is not constant it is fluctuating every day on the basis of the economy the price of the dollar in terms of rupees and sorry the price of rupees in terms of dollar increase or decrease so that is what it is happening up so it makes very difficult to calculate and it is impossible to make the real comparison which you want to know it is just all estimates which are been need but it is not the real comparison which can be done so this is what the limitations are been talking about growth rate of per capita income i hope you are being clear with all the points here now let's just briefly discuss about the limitation that is we have studied about 
that it does not show the true national income then after it is we can say it is difficulty in calculation of national income and per capita income so all these points taken into consider and we can say that per capita income does also does not show the real comparison now you have to write the notes in your notebook about this topic now further two po more points are there that is physical quality of life as well as human development index which we are going to continue in the next lecture but for today you have to go with this two only because that particular two points two indicators are very much bigger and it has so much of data so we'll continue with the next chapter but for today you have to write the notes from this video and you have to memorize if you find any difficulty any query in any point you can message me okay uh, thank you for today